What's up guys? Welcome back to The Question, where you have the questions and I have the answers. And today we're doing something a little bit different. I know you're probably thinking, wow, oh my god, like, I never see videos from you during the school year because you're in school and really busy and you never have time to make videos. Um, and yes, that's correct. But this is for a class assignment. I am in a philosophy class about coexistence. And for my project, we need to create a public service announcement outlining three of our favorite quotes from things we've read about coexistence and how it relates to this concept we keep discussing called this odd debt, which is essentially that human beings feel this odd sense of debt towards each other. And that is what leads us to want to try and work things out with one another not in a so we're all happy, smiling, holding hands, singing kumbaya, like we're all friends kind of way, but to come to a sense of coexistence where we fundamentally respect and care for each other and view each other as people um, without needing to necessarily like one another. And so without further ado, I will outline my three quotes. So my first quote from this class that has really resonated with me is from Martin Luther King Jr.'s Love Your Enemy speech, which is non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. And I think this really spoke to me because it is not as much doing the right thing and helping people and saying the right things and pushing for good initiatives. It's also a lot of calling out bad initiatives and calling out harm. And I think this really resonated with me because I will fill you all in later about the horrors I've experienced at the University of Denver this year. But a lot of what I think we don't hold accountable for is that we try and, you know, push ourselves out here and put ourselves out here as such a like good university where neutral, we, you know, have a lot of queer students, we have a lot of BIPOC students, and we have these initiatives. However, we don't like to call out when things are doing harm. You know, we have a lot of really great professors, we have a lot of really, really great programs. We have a lot of really harmful professors. We have a lot of really harmful systems and just ideas and the way we relate to white supremacy is something that we aren't as willing to unpack as we are to promote good things. And it's not just like the school promoting good things, it's promoting other people doing good things and forcing that invisible labor. And that doesn't help with coexistence because I can tell you firsthand that it just breeds resentment from the system and the institution if the people who are the most oppressed and the most marginalized are continuously having to be the only people doing the work to better their own situation. And it feels like a slap in the face to have such a broad institution be like, yes, we're here for you, we help you, but you're not gonna work to call out the people who are doing the harm or you're not going to work to it inside yourselves to work to fix anything and so it's not just outward work it's inward work as well and I think that's something that we really try and get to with the odd debt is that it doesn't come from an outward sense it has to come internally and so we've looked at a lot of people like Gloria Anseldua and others who state that there needs to be something deep inside like the work has to come from inside first and then translate to outside we have to imagine coexistence we have to imagine working together first before we can actually do the work outside um because if you and i see this so many times if you want to just be seen as a good person and without actually taking the time to deconstruct your idea of what a good person is and how you relate to these systems you're gonna end up doing more harm than good or no good at all. My next quote, I believe it's from a former professor, um, and he did a lot of work with our spiritual projects, which is to try and get African-American spirituals a space to do healing as well as just cultural work with it so people are more aware of it, understand the history and can appreciate the healing properties that it had and the liberatory properties that it had. Um, this is a quote from Arthur Jones, and it says, African people are a diunital people seeking richness of meaning in an 
apparent contradiction. They are comfortable bringing together realities which may appear contradicting or in opposition. They reach towards unification or may appear or synthesis of opposites. African Americans for 400 years have used symbol and song to express a faith too high, too low, too wide, too deep for words, too passionate to be confined by concepts. And what I really loved about this is the idea of holding two contradictory truths at once. I think that is something that we have gotten really bad at doing here in America, at least in the West, is that anytime something happens, a conflict happens, and we're seeing this right now with October 7th and Israel and Gaza and Israel and Hamas, is that there always has to be one side is good, one side is bad, one side is the oppressing, one side is the oppressed, but in reality, because of the interlocking systems of oppression and colonization and just all the various isms we've created from our time here on Earth, things are really complicated. And they're complicated, but they're also very simple. And so I think the simple fact is that at the end of the day, we're all humans experiencing horrible circumstances. And so, and this is something that I've always advocated for, especially as a Jewish person, living within like, I guess I'd say the fallout of October 7th in a diasporic space is the, both of these narratives can be true or can be believed to be true because th these narratives, whether they are factually or objectively true or not, are having effects on these communities. And so we need to be able to hold space for all these narratives, all these beliefs and all these feelings in order to synthesize a solution. And so I like the idea of like these spirituals and this culture being centered around holding these two contradicting ideas or contradicting narratives together in order to learn from it and heal from it. I also like the idea, I'm not a very religious person, but I've always found the idea of like a strong faith really beautiful to me because I like how there is always something like just deep in your core that drives you to do something that you believe in something so much that you would put your life on the line for that. And a lot of people find that in religion and in their belief in a higher power. And I think this case, it can be used to connect that to that odd debt. And I think I do feel that in a sense is I feel so much an obligation and responsibility to the people around me who I know are suffering, who I know are hurting. And these are people that I may not have like ever met or talked to really, but like I care so much about them that I would put myself in danger, I've learned in the past weekend, to protect them. Um, and to elaborate on that is there is a student group on my campus called MESA. They're the Middle Eastern Student Association and they received death threats by this parenting group and I know that there was an event coming up put on in part by Mesa that this group was aware of that they had threatened harm to these members, harm to their advisor and were trying to send people there to possibly cause them harm and I just I've never been to a Mesa event before. I just don't have the time. I really wanted to though, but I've seen their group around and I've seen them interact with students and I just, I couldn't sit by and do nothing knowing that there's this threat to them that they may ha or may not have been aware of. I had no idea. Um, and I was told specifically not to tell them um, in case an authority figure did something else. Um, and I decided that I was going to, I looked at my teacher, of course, I was going to skip class to go to this event to do whatever I could to protect them. Because um, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I felt such an obligation and care for these people. And I think that is what we're trying to get at with that odd debt and with this like faith in humanity is this feeling of like you need to care about these people on a human level and make sure that you want to take care of them and that's how we can get coexistence because I didn't agree with everything that was said about that event. I didn't agree with everything that they said, everything that they believe, however, that doesn't mean that they get to be put in harm's way because of that discrepancy, in my opinion. My final quote 
is from activist Maurice Mitchell and it says, although it may be personally fulfilling and individually empowering to do and say the things you desire when you desire, institution and organization building requires a discipline to advance a collective strategy. I love this because I've thought about this a lot. We, the generation, have gotten so bad at community organizing. When you look to the past, and yes, the past is framed in a very specific view, you see, you know, all these organizations like the Black Panthers, you see the Civil Rights Movement where they were able to organize like a bunch of people to march on Washington. And even now when you look at it, it's more like Gen X or older millennials who are the ones organizing BLM protests, that they are organizing these things. And with a lot of Gen Z activists, you see more like individual people speaking out, but you don't see them with the whole collective for the most part. And even here at DU with a lot of what I try and do for the queer community on campus is I do a lot of it myself. And it's not that I don't try and work with people, it's just other people don't feel compelled to work together or we have too many differences within our community that we don't wanna to work together with or they don't see other people's struggle as their own struggle. Um, and so I think about this because yeah, it's really, really enticing to just see that you and your identities have made it and you're doing well. Um, or to pick every little petty fight that you can because you know it's wrong. However, we don't tend to look at like a group strategy anymore. We don't tend to think of like what could be best for the community versus what could be best for what I'm seeing right now. Um, and that's hard because that collectivism, this power in numbers and powers in a group and this unification and like, you know, acting as a united front. And I think there's a difference between acting as a united front than being a monolith. You know, I don't want everybody to perceive us as a monolith because we're not, we contain multitudes. However, we are so much stronger when we are together and it's so easy to pick apart a movement if they know that there are dissenting factors from within their own community. Um, but a lot of that collective strategy, a lot of that community building, I think has been lost. And I don't know if it's because of technology. I don't know if it's because of lack of technology because I think the most unification ever seen through Gen Z was while we were through Zoom and while we were only confined to being online. But since then, I have not seen the same kind of collective strategy since. I think we just don't hold it as important. Maybe we don't even hold it as feasible anymore, but it's not a value that I think my generation seems to have. And so that's why I chose the Maurice Mitchell quote because it is, and this is something that we've talked about in class as well, is this thing called a threefold chord, which includes authenticity, ethics, and equity. And it's basically like, you need to be operating coexistence or at least wanting for coexistence on all three of these levels, like authentic, the personal. You need to be doing, as I said earlier, this kind of work within yourself to try and figure out like, you know, and work with yourself to make sure that you are in a position to be offering this coexistence, that you've deconstructed all these ideologies for yourself, you've deconstructed these systems for yourself. And then ethics, which I think is where a lot of that odd debt comes in is like, what is your obligation to your fellow man? You know, just interpersonal relationships, the people around you. And then equity, which is the giant system, you know, it's like, but you gotta build all three of these together. You can't have one without the other or two without the last one because coexistence needs to operate on every level because we've seen what happens when it doesn't. I mean, you know, the UN is operating at an equitable level but we very much haven't done the work to, recon to deconstruct these systems ourselves. We haven't done the work to try and care for each other as human beings and as other countries, but we want to try and work to repair the world. And that's why a lot of it falls apart because we don't have that commitment to each other or to our own people. Um, and so I think that's why a lot of this fails because we always try and do one or the other or the other, but we don't try and do all of them together. 
at least we haven't seen that on a large enough scale in which we can uh, we can say that hey, this works or this doesn't work. But I think it can, but I think we need to get a lot more people to try and do it. And I think we also need to put a lot of our egos aside. I think in the West there's a lot of thing of like, I'm gonna be great, I'm gonna make a lot of change. And I'm guilty of thinking this way. It was like, I want someone to make a statue of me when I leave. I want, you know, my name to go out on a history book. But it's like, the legacy we leave should be the action that we do, not who we were. And so I think if we're sacrificing being the one in the history book to support wherever we can, the collective movement, I think that is right, like way more important and I don't think that we see that a lot of the time here anymore, especially when it comes to like TikTok and we've come to a lot of social media. My friend talked about this, is that you don't see a lot of like group forums anymore, you now just see individual content creators that people can comment and react to, but it's less of a conversation and more of a reaction to a, um, a vent or a post or a person and that creates a hierarchy. There's no longer like a collective equal community to discuss these topics anymore. Um, and so like I saw sites like Tumblr or Reddit have now been super changed to like TikTok or YouTube or Instagram where you can't have that ready conversation and it turns the people who create this content into kind of a mini celebrity versus somebody who just is creating for the community. Um, and obviously I don't think social media is the sole reason behind this. I think social media just highlights a lot of the aspects we already had, the problems that we already had, and has just amplified them and made them quicker because we have easier access to the systems which created these problems in the first place. But that's a rant for another day. So yeah, that's my public service announcement. It's really long and rambly. I think most public service announcements that came on in the 80s were like commercials, so like two to four minutes, um, but you know I have the inability to talk about anything for only two to four minutes. But I hope that you can take some of this idea away and that you can start implementing it in your own life so that we can be the change that we want to see in the world, Mahatma Gandhi, even though he was not the best person. <laughs> um, but his words were wise. So I think we can take that and really just embody this idea of the threefold cord and our debt and work to create a coexistence that is long lasting and isn't just held together by superficiality or need to stay in power or outside expectations but really because of a want and care for other people and a want and care for ourselves. Yeah, I will try and get a more regular upload schedule since I'm going into finals week and going into spring break and so I'll have more time. If you have any questions, if you have any comments about this, um, please let me know because I'd love to talk about it. Um, that being said, be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes. So long and thanks for all the fish.